Good afternoon, everyone. Second record snowfall this year in Fairbanks, Alaska. Previous record was 7 inches. This one is 11.2 inches. NOAA's Weather Service data chart, September, second wettest in 102 years. Snowfall, second snowiest in 102 years. Bar chart for you. Juno, wettest on record. And a look back at this late September, early October, double record snowfalls for Fairbanks. This is a global temperature forecast based on El Nino. Polar bear concentrations from Environment Canada. It's a nice look at our temperatures across the planet during maximum glaciation 18,000 years ago. Take you back to September 30th, October 1st. Greatest 24 hour September snowfall on record in Fairbanks, Alaska. Now, Fairbanks reported 11.2 inches with the old record at 7 inches, but places like South Fox and Chenna Hot Springs reporting 15 inches. Ruler in the snow showing the exact same. Some images in September as well. Previous snowfalls unusually early. Fairbanks only gets about 1.9 inches of snow during the entire month of September on average. This snow was like the previous snows last year across the southeast United States that was wet and heavy, dragging down trees, power lines, which caused tens of thousands of people to be without power. After the record snowfall, 15,000 customers in the interior, I know the population's very spread out in Alaska. Affecting this many people in a populated area would have been in the hundreds of thousands. Really interesting view on 14-hour difference between the top photo and the bottom. Look through NOAA's weather service. Precipitation, rain, second wettest in 102 years. Snow, second snowiest in 102 years. Bar chart shows it stacks up the years in case you would like to do some of your own research. Another view here of some power lines down and trees snapped. Juno, wettest on record, period. There have been two record snowfalls on two different days in Fairbanks this year, in September, and the first day of October. This is a full rundown. You can pause here and read through yourself. 6.7 inches on the first record snowfall. And the 30th then came at 11.2 inches. Pushing forward into the year, Weather Trends puts out an El Nino forecast showing where the polar jet stream will be and the temperature variant, gradient, and difference. Yet NOAA has something completely different to say. Warm, 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 hot, hot, hot. We're boiling. The frogs are boiling. There's no more ice. Oh, wait a second. There's still sea ice up there. September 29th image here. Gargantuan change across the northern hemisphere. That includes the record snows in Siberia, the record snows in early winter in Norway. And as always, polar bears are at the forefront of the Arctic Circle climate debate. Alaska, Canada. 1960s, there were 5,000 polar bears. Today, there's 25,000 polar bears. Environment Canada showed you exactly where these polar bears are in the northern hemisphere and their populations are the populations uncertain that's all the gray area so they don't even really know what's going on with the polar bear populations in those brownish gray areas which is about half of the full range of this animal green is likely increases b is stable red is in decline but overall the way i had been told in the media and read stories about it the polar bears were crashing down to almost zero look at the 2010 difference to 2014 that is a gigantic jump of stabilization in the polar bears with increases yet we still continue to be fed mistruths in the media about the polar bear population collapse climate change happens all the time our climate is always in a cycle of increasing temperature and decreasing temperature naturally based on forces outside of our own planet, on the sun, energy through our solar system, through Birkeland currents, 
ebbing and flowing from other star systems and galaxies. It's an interconnected web of energy throughout the entire galaxy. Geophysical Institute, why was Alaska greener during the Ice Age? And also, if we go back 52 million years, palm trees. So that gives you two options of how the climate changed. Either there was some actual movement of the planet where the equator was thrust northward in some cataclysmic event, or the climate changed and went from hot to cold and cold to hot. Dr. Art Green's reconstruction of abrupt climate changes throughout Earth's history in 17,000 year segment. The Earth's climate is always changing. It always has been and it always will be. There are ups, there are downs. There's warming and cooling both. We're starting into a cooling trend now. And of course the IPCC will say something that warming has led to cooling because they can no longer go with the warming narrative. It just doesn't fit anymore and as we go into this winter it will be cooler and snowier which means the IPCC will need to change its model from hot equals hot into hot equals cold. Watch the changes in the media, it's already starting. What's really interesting about Alaska is during the last ice age in the Laurentide ice sheet covering most of North America, Alaska remained mainly glacier free at that time. Another image polar vortex similarities but in the upper left Alaska shows yet again the same 20,000 years ago ice free during the full glaciation. Temperature does lead CO2 by approximately 600 years. There's a lot of research out on this yet the IPCC seems to overlook it. Jumping over to Wikipedia there's a whole description of what the Laurentide ice sheet is and which areas were affected but I did like the part uh, of Alaska being in a non-glaciated state which would coincide with today's temperatures that it would stay a little bit warmer in Alaska while the rest of the area in the northern hemisphere might be cooling. In a smaller chunk of time up and down up and down up and down in the temperatures natural cycles. Thanks for watching hope you got something out of the video. Please remember to subscribe to my channel adapt 2030 share this in your social media and I will keep these videos coming to you.